trying something new here, a quick review of the Galaxy M30 without compromising on the amount of information you need to know to decide whether to buy this phone or not. Let's get started right away. My name is Ashwin Sundar. This is Technology Jock. Kindly subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for more videos like this. By the way, there's a giveaway running in the channel right now, so go check it out. Samsung has gone with the trend of making a plastic phone look good, just like the Realme 2 Pro and the Zenfone Max Pro M2. That transition from dark to light blue looks amazing. The build quality is also really good, no issues whatsoever. Only thing is it's plastic so it tends to pick up scratches and unfortunately Samsung does not offer a free case in the box. Now turn it around and there is the full HD plus super AMOLED display with excellent colors, contrast and brightness. It has wide L1 certification so you can stream videos in full HD resolution. One negative thing, the auto brightness feature is inconsistent. The display doesn't become dim whenever it should. Uh, and although the Infinity U display provides a great viewing experience, the notch is too small so there is no notification LED. Anyway, all things considered, this is easily the best display in this price segment. The earpiece on top does a good job and since the back is plastic, the cellular reception is also good. When it comes to raw performance though, the M30 is much better than Samsung's old mid-range phones like the J series but still not as good as its competitors now. The Exynos 7904 chip used in the M30 is slightly inferior to the Snapdragon 636 chip and far behind Snapdragon 660 and 675. Even while simply browsing or checking WhatsApp and Twitter, I could see some stutters occasionally. And obviously things get worse while gaming, PUBG is not even playable in medium graphic settings. And it's okay in low graphic settings. For what it's worth, there were no heating issues despite playing continuously for one hour. That said, the background app management is great. In the speed test between Note 7 Pro and M30, the M30 didn't even reload PUBG despite having over 10 other apps open in the background. That's great optimization. There are two variants, 464 and 6128. But if you need more storage, there's also a micro SD card slot for that, a dedicated slot. Now, while the performance is kind of disappointing, the battery life on the M30 is a completely different story. For medium usage, I easily got two days battery life and even on heavy usage, like I'm talking about a lot of PUBG, a lot of camera usage and so on, I got through one full day with about 30% charge left. That's impressive. Let's now jump to the camera department. The M30 has got a triple camera setup. The 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera is new. It performs reasonably well under good lighting conditions, but struggles in low light. Cannot complain because this is the only phone in this price segment to have an ultra wide angle camera. In extreme conditions, just stick to the 13 megapixel main camera, which is really good. The images are super sharp with punchy colors and good dynamic range. Now, if you don't understand those camera terms like dynamic range, aperture, etc., if you want to become a pro, then go watch this video. I've explained everything in very simple terms. So anyway, the M30 struggles quite a bit when it comes to low light photography. It's far behind the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Here's a full detailed camera comparison between the Note 7 Pro and M30. Watch it if you're interested. There's also a 5 megapixel depth sensor which helps with portrait mode. Uh, the edge detection and background blur are quite good, but it messes up the exposure at times. When it comes to selfies though, the M30 is probably the best in this price segment. Good skin tones, good colors and excellent dynamic range. Here's a comparison with the Note 7 Pro to give you an idea. On the video front, the M30 is not very impressive. Maximum resolution is 1080p and there is no EIS or electronic image stabilization. So footage is a bit shaky and quality wise I would give it 7 on 10. And yes, the M30 supports camera to API out of the box. But so far I haven't been able to find a stable Google camera version. Every version has some issue or the other. If any of you get to find something, let me know in the comment section. I'll add it to the description. The M30 runs Samsung Experience 9.5 based on Android 8.1 Oreo. When will it get Android Pie? Not anytime soon. Will it get One UI? Yes, but again, not anytime soon. Uh, this UI has a minimal set of features, including face unlock, which to be honest, is not all that fast or accurate. It's better to use the rear fingerprint scanner instead, which is reasonably fast and a lot safer. So, should you buy this phone? Well, it offers decent specifications for 15,000 rupees and it has certain features that other phones in this segment don't. 
So if you're a hardcore Samsung fan, if you're willing to compromise on the overall performance of the phone to an extent because you believe in Samsung's brand value, then this phone is okay. It's a more than decent phone, unless you play a lot of PUBG, a lot of games. Uh, however, if you are open to buying a phone from any other brand, then you should definitely take a look at the Redmi Note 7 Pro, the Zenfone Max Pro M2, or even wait for the upcoming Realme 3 Pro to see what it offers. So that's it. I'm pretty sure I took more than five minutes i'm not sure uh but it's just the beginning hope i get better at this uh there's just so much information i need to cram into those five minutes also if you feel you didn't get enough information about something then let me know what it is in the comment section we'll discuss there so yeah if you like the video hit the thumbs up button subscribe to technology jock and more importantly please hit the bell icon thanks a lot for watching this is ashwin sundar and i'll see you in my next video bye